um, did you know that you were going to follow your dad's footsteps onto the ribs, or was that something that happened within the border? Um, it was a tricky one, you know, because, like I said, I wasn't I, like, I wasn't stupid in school. I was quite actually okay, um, but just the authority thing, I couldn't get get round with. So I kind of left. Did a bit of college work when I was 16, working in the fish factory, and back then it was a bit more easy to get into the, the oil and gas side of things. So, Dad, like for my 18th birthday, so you need a an offshore survival course. You have to go and do all this jumping out of a helicopter and all this jazz. Nothing, nothing fancy. So anyway, he got me that, and that enabled me to go offshore. Um, but growing up, I never thought I was going to be on oil rig. Jesus, I didn't. It's not something you exactly dream about. Oh, I want to go away and be two, three weeks away with other sweaty, horrible men sharing a bunk bed, there, sharing uh, a room with a couple of sweaty men. It's not. If that's your idea of a good time and fair, fair play, but for me, it's it's just not. It wasn't something that I envisioned myself to do. Um, but it was up here in Scotland. The oil and gas is so prominent, you know, it's such a... But again, when I was younger, it was quite an easy job to get into if you knew someone that could kind of vouch for you and stuff. And luckily, Dad kind of vouched for me and he got me in with his company. And then it was up to me to, you know, progress and, and kind of climb that ladder, so to speak. And yeah, I did that for 16 years and it was a, yeah, it was a huge part of my life, you know, but it's... Thankfully, that's done now. You know, it's, um, I would, it's a tough one. I wouldn't say I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but it's not a, it's a very kind of, it can be a very damaging way of life, you know, especially with a family or a wife or, you know, it's, if you're a single guy, you know, fire then go for it, make your money and do whatever. But, you know, it's, it's tough when you're, when you're married and you're trying to have that kind of, relationship with someone you're still getting to know each other as well you know you're still kind of growing together so I found when I went away my kind of mentality and my mental health really took a battering it was you're almost getting prepared to kind of go to war almost it was and my wife Cushy really noticed that you know it was like two three four days before I went off it was pretty much ruined because I was getting into that zone and kind of thinking it was almost like a resentment I had to go away and, you know, all my friends were at home and my wife was at home and stuff and um, it's, it's tough, it's, it is a really tough way of life being away for so long um, and you really need to have someone that you, you trust 100%. I've seen so many guys, such a shame when you're offshore, you know, their wives or girlfriends are doing whatever, you know, some other guys and stuff and um, thankfully rightly or wrongly I trust Cushy 100% and that that trust that you have for your partner is so important when you're in that type of environment because oh, it's, it's awful they just self-destruct when they're out there and sometimes you have to get the, the, the helicopters to come in from the oil rig and go home and it's it's such a it can be such a toxic place to be when you're in your mental health isn't that great yeah it's it's, um, it's tough man but hopefully touch wood I won't have to be going back off again anytime soon. So, I mean, mixing to that, that you start, you've, been, you've been doing strongman for a while, whilst she's on the ribs as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, true. What's, I mean, that's a like, concoction for... Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, I remember, so my, my first trip offshore when I was 18, um, I thought, you know, I, I did the gym before when I was 16, kind of just in for chest and whatever. So offshore, when you're there, you've got, there's a TV room and there's a gym in the majority of rigs you go to. So I was like, well, I could either sit around, eat sweets, get fat and watch TV, or I could try and go to the gym. So I thought, right, stuff it. Very first gym I went to offshore, <laughs> it's actually a boy from Invergordon, uh, I went down to the gym and this grown man was running in his wife fronts, his pants, on the treadmill. I'm like, for fuck's sake, this is... This is this isn't for me, like, I, I don't know why he was running in his pants, for one. So, right, fine, just don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact, it'll be fine. Um, and just started training, and then that really helped the mentality, my mindset kind of cope with things, because you're seeing progress, you know, every day is 
groundhog day pretty much when you're out in the rigs, but if you can see that progress in the gym and stuff, you can almost take comfort in things are moving forward and there's, it's a weird thing, I don't know, a weird outlook I had on it, it just helped me kind of focus on something that was getting better, that was making me kind of a better person, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it's tough, I mean, some of the rigs you go to, there was a treadmill and that's all you could do, so yeah, okay, I'll try and do 10k a day or whatever, you know, just change however you can. Um, but it was, I'm not going to lie, it was tough to compete with. You know, I was doing three weeks a month, kind of, and there's a lot of guys that I'm going up against that are working and living and breathing, doing the gym, doing strongman, and that was a tough thing. And I, I kind of, I think back then when I was, when I was doing it full time like that, it was, um, I always doubted myself going into a competition. I thought to myself, you know, it's like, these guys have got so much more than I ever will have and they're so much stronger and um, and then it just takes that kind of, it's almost a flip, you know, a, a switch went off my head. I'm like, I'm beating some of these guys while I've just done three weeks, I've just come out to a competition, I'm beating them and these are full time. I thought, geez, imagine that. And it was actually um, Colin Bryce, the director of Giants Live, that said to me, he says, he says, look, you carry on doing this, you know, part-time, part-time uh, training, part-time results, full-time training, full-time results, and that really stuck with me, you know, that really, I thought, yeah, you know, it's, he's been about a bit and he knows what he's talking about, so I thought, I think it was the last year, finishing second in one of his shows, I thought, imagine, I wonder where I can get to, um, and I just made the decision just to stop, I says, right, that's it, I'm, I'm done offshore, you know, I owe it to myself. I don't want to be one of those guys in 15 years in the pub saying, ah, oh, well, I could have done that. I could have done this, I could have done that. I would hate myself if I turned into one of those people that they could have, you know, I could have, should have done it. It's not something who I am. I've not been brought up like that. I've been brought up to, you know, put in the work and get the rewards. That's, that's how I see myself. So for me, it was it was taking a big chance, you know, because offshore is quite well paid. Um, and it was like, you know what, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. So took that risk. And, well, we've only had one competition this year, so <laughs> I don't know how it's paying off. <laughs> so hopefully, come the competitions, when they do come, you know, everything will be all gun ho will be, you know, really ready to kind of kick some ass when we go out to these big comps. So that's the plan anyway. Um, I mean, even outside of, of Strongman, there's a, a lot of people who are on the edge of making that same decision mm. or struggling to make that same decision for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, looking back uh, with now with the perspective you've got yeah. now, what would you say to them? I, I just don't think about it. Just do it. You know, it's if you find your passion in anything, you know, it could be baking, it could be drawing, writing, whatever. It's find that passion and just don't let it go. Um, don't have that plan B, you know. Um, that's what I had for so long, so strong, man. It was, just, it was just a hobby. You know, even though we were making some money and we're, it was growing and stuff, it was just a, a hobby. So I thought, well, you know, I'll do the offshore thing. I'll maybe do a bit more of the strong man, but I always have that plan B to go back in the rigs. So now I'm, I'm done. There's no... No plan B, C, D, it's only one thing and that's Strongman and that's improving myself and the brand, the Stoltman brand, you know, to be a worldwide brand and to, you know, really cement my feet and the kind of, the foundations of strength across the world. That's my plan. Um, and if it doesn't work, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm not thinking that, I'm thinking it's got to work. You know, I don't have... I've got a wife to support, I've got a house to pay for, I've got, you know, our dad, he's kind of retired now, so looking after him as much as we can, I want to be able to financially support him and just let him live his retirement because he's done so much to us. Um, so it'd be nothing better for me, you know, to be able to go out to, I don't know, whatever, buy him a new pickup, you know. Imagine, you know, if I was, if my son did that to me and, and financially could afford to do that, I'd be so proud. 
Um, so that's what I want to be able to do is, is make this work, not only just for me, but you know, to show other people around here, around the Highlands, that it's a possibility. It's not, not to, you get all these naysayers saying, no, you can't do that, it's not a good idea, blah, blah, you're, you're in a secure job. That's fine, but that secure job, you had to start somewhere with it. You know, so take that chance and think, right, don't, don't throw it away by being in something that you hate doing. You know, it's, it's and I think our mum pass, passing away, that really kind of installed that kind of thinking. It's like, your life is just so fragile. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so treat each day like it's your last day. And, and that's what I've been doing, I think, for the last, last little while. And it's, it's, you enjoy life a lot more doing it that way, I think. Bye. Uh -huh.